Hey, hey, hey. All right. So I know. Okay. So I have a concern about Xenoblade 3, but I don't think it's actually going to like come to fruition. I don't know. Saying, calling it a concern makes it sound like I'm doubting Xenoblade 3 or that I'm like scared or fearful. Well, I guess I'm a little scared, but I'm not like doubting or anything, doubting Xenoblade 3 or anything. So it's more like a, a worry than like a concern. I don't know. But um, like I'm, I'm sure there's many things that I'm worried about if I were to think about it. But one of the biggest things I'm worried about is, you know, the topic of this video. And before I actually start, I want to say spoilers for Xenoblade 1 and 2. Because, I mean, I, in order to understand, well, I guess it's not that necessary, but just to be safe, I'm going to say spoilers for Xenoblade 1 and 2. Because you need little context from those games in order to understand my concern for this game. And there's going to be some X stuff up in there, but no spoilers for X. But... Basically, what I'm like concerned about is an area being blocked off or an area being blocked off post game. Like, being rendered completely inaccessible. In Xenoblade 1, after the events of Makanis Core and Zanza, you know, kills Maynith and destroys the Makanis, we can no longer visit the Makanis in the post game. And the only way to like go back to it is, you know, through a new game plus. So the entirety of the Makanis is literally inaccessible. We can't go back to it. So if you missed any items for the Collectopedia or any weapons or gear or anything, you're kind of fucked. Okay? And unless you do new game plus. After the Vince of Makanis core, you can't go back to the Makanis for anything. It just, you know, took away the only access point. And for Xenoblade 2, Indol, same thing with Indol. After, like, when we're in the World Tree and we get to the Sky Bridge, I think it's, what, Chapter 8 or 9, when we realize that Malthus is an evil motherfucker, uh, Indol becomes completely inaccessible, and they move all of the Merc missions and quests over to left theory I think it was now you're not really missing anything from um Indol that I can think of like I'm trying to think but I don't think you like locked out or miss anything after Indol becomes closed off because all the quests at least the Merc missions get moved over to left theory I, I don't know quests you may not be able to and there's certain shops there that I'm sure sell certain certain like accessories and octocores or whatever that you can't get anywhere else. But accessories, they're not too big of a deal if you miss certain ones, considering most of them aren't really too useful if you're going for like optimal builds. But the reason I'm concerned because you know what if there's an area in Xenoblade 3 that gets locked off that we can't go back to once we hit a certain point in the story unless we play new game plus but although you know that is like a worry I don't think it's actually going to happen because if you if you think about it Xenoblade 3, or like Ionios, has been taking a lot of inspiration from Xenoblade X, you know, and Mira, in terms of like the world building and how the world is constructed. In Xenoblade 1 and 2, we were on Titans, so it wasn't one big landmass. So they're their own different little things, so it was kind of easy to just lock those areas out. Like, you can just literally take away the only entrance points to the areas. Like, in Xenoblade 1, the only way to get to Makanis without, you know, quick traveling is you know through the fallen arm there's like a little tunnel or whatever you can get there through the fallen arm after the events, the events of makana's core that little tunnel or area in the fallen arm is no longer there 
so you can no longer get to the Makan is completely blocking it off. In Xenoblade 2, the only way to get to Indol is to fast travel there outside of, you know, cutscenes or whatever. And, you know, and just like replay a cutscene to get there. So the only way to get to Indol is to fast travel, and they completely block that off. Now, the reason why I don't think it'll be the case for Xenoblade 3, and why I say it takes a lot of inspiration after Mira, is because Ayanias, as far as we know right now, is like one huge giant like landmass. It's a singular landmass and not a bunch of little different titans, kind of like Mira. So like you can't really block any areas off in a world like that, at least in like Mira, because you got the skills. If you were to like put up a wall or whatever, you can just fly over it. Now I guess you can put just put up like an invisible wall or barrier to keep, um, you know, keep players away from certain areas. But that would break immersion and like blocking off one of the entire continents on Mira, that would just be really fucking dumb. Okay, if they just blocked off, like, say they just blocked off all of Noctilum once you reached a certain part in the story. Now, there may be story significance to it, but Noctilum is a massive area. That's literally a fifth of the world just completely gone that you can't go back to. And there's no New Game Plus in Xenoblade X either. So, blocking off an area would make, like, no sense at all unless you completely started a brand new playthrough and now thinking about that that makes me think makes me think what if Xenoblade 3 doesn't have new game plus because if you know can't block off an area if there's no new game plus because there's no way to get back to that area so it's weird because Xenoblade 3 takes a lot after X and 1 and 2 and X is kind of like detached from 1 and 2 so in terms of like the world building, yeah, you can't really block off an area because it's like one huge landmass. You're kind of just blocking off a giant part of the world that, you know, is just break immersion to do that. And then, but Xenoblade 3 is taken after 1 and 2, and 1 and 2 have new game pluses. At least DE does for Xenoblade 1. So, I see no reason why Xenoblade 3 wouldn't have a new game plus. So there'd be no reason to um I don't know. I'm pretty sure Xenoblade 3 will have a new game plus. It'd be kinda dumb not to considering one and two have it. And but I don't think an area will actually have an area like blocked off or lock, be locked out of an area for the pose game because you know they didn't do that with Xenoblade X and Ionios is more similar to Mira than it is to you know Ulrest or the Xenoblade 1 world so although it is a possibility I don't think it's actually going to happen but there's a chance it might happen because it happened in 1 and 2 but they didn't do that in X because the world was so much different. So, though it's taking more, or Xenoblade 3 is taking more of an X approach in terms of world building, I think, I think, I think we'll be safe for Okay. Uh, I, there's, there's something else I was thinking about. It was like, Xenoblade classes. Um, obviously some classes are going to be better than others and I'm kind of scared it's gonna follow the path that Xenoblade 2 did. In Xenoblade 2 healers are completely useless okay there's no reason to have like a dedicated healer. Avant-Garde Metal exists so there's no reason to have healers. In Avant-Garde Metal for those who don't know is you literally heal every time you crit and Crit rate is not hard at all to get. It's really not that hard to crit in Xenoblade 2. And if you saw my video yesterday, then you'll know, like, healing is no problem at all. Like, in Xenoblade 2, 
any character be can be self-sustainable. If they just throw an avant-garde metal on them, they'll like almost never die. So healers are practically obsolete. Okay, and there's a lot of certain accessories and ox cores that kind of just naturally would gravitate towards. If you're like going for optimal builds, obviously there's only a few that, you know, everybody uses. Say Affinity Max Tech, everybody runs that in their blades. Avant-Garde Metal Crimson Headband. Like there's a lot of accessories in the game that people just don't even use. So for Xenoblade 3, there's a lot of classes and they all have different, you know, chain attack bonuses. Obviously some are going to be better than others. Say Alexandria, for example, she, her attack power increases every time she crits. That's really broken and that's what made Fiora so broken in Xenoblade 2 because she has a skill like that. So, and apparently there's different caps for different classes, which just seems wildly inconsistent. It makes no sense at all. So, I'm afraid that some classes will have like chain attack bonuses that are just not going to be useful at all. In terms of like build, certain builds for party members. So, like, I'm, I'm hoping that Monolith balances it since there's so many different heroes that all have their own different, you know, their own unique, like, um, bonuses and every character's bonus or every class's bonus will have their own unique use. But I'm afraid some class is just going to be rendered obsolete because there's just objectively better ones, you know, kind of like what happened in Xenoblade 2. Shield hammers and healers are just non-existent <laughs> anymore there's like no reason to use a healer if you have an av avant-garde metal and there's no reason to use a shield hammer because literally every other blade class is so i don't know just a couple things that i was thinking about and i'm kind of worried for xenoblade 3 but i i trust monolith will you know find some way to you know, mediate that, at least the second one. The first one's easy to solve, just don't block off an area. It's gonna be a lot harder to balance classes to make sure no one class is better than the next, you know, better than a different, another one. But this is a JRPG, so that's bound to happen. It's kind of like, it's kind of like part of JRPGs now to have like one thing that's overpowered and makes the game broken while everything else is just kind of there. But, I don't know, I might be thinking too far into it. Either way, regardless of what Monopond does with Xenoblade 3, I'm going to love the game. Either way, like, I'm going to love the game way more than I expect to. So, like, I'm not going into Xenoblade 3 with any expectations. I don't go into anything with any expectations. So my mind's going to be blown. This game is going to be absolutely incredible. Best game ever created, hands down. Like, I love Xenoblade 2, but Xenoblade 3 is, it's, it's, it's already up there, okay? So, you just, uh, there's something I really, I wanted to go over real quick. It's like a little worry or concern that I have. But I don't think actually will happen, at least for like, the getting locked off from areas thing. It's inevitable that certain classes will be used way more than others. Like, some classes will go virtually unused. Barely anyone's gonna use certain classes over other ones, you know, over better ones. So, I don't know, I'm just praying Juniper doesn't have a garbage ass class, okay? Y'all know how much I love Juniper. I really want her to have a good class. I don't think we've actually seen, like, we don't even know any of the class bonuses for any of the heroes except Alexandra. She's the only hero we saw being used in a chain attack. So we only know her class or her chain attack bonus. But I really hope, I really hope Juniper has a good one because I love Juniper, okay? For any reason, I'll find any reason to use her. Right? Even if even if Juniper is the worst hero in the game, I'm still put I'm still gonna put her on my team. I'm still going to use her because 
Ugh, have you seen her? Look at Juniper. Okay. But yeah, that's really about it for this video. Um Yeah, just a couple things I wanted to go over. And I don't know, maybe some of y'all are worried about the same thing, but yeah, that's that's really it for this video. So as always, thanks for watching. Have a damn good day. Stay safe. Be well. Play some goddamn Beetle Bleed.